The Canola School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by BSF Canada and Invigor Hybrid Canola. I'm Kelvin Hepner for Real Agriculture, and as you might be able to tell by the shininess on my forehead, it's a little warm out right now, and much of the canola crop in Western Canada is facing some of this same heat stress this year. So joining us, we have Nate Ort, agronomy specialist with the Canola Council of Canada here in Manitoba. And we start our conversation by talking about how pod formation happens in canola in a year where we don't have this same level of heat stress. In a normal world, in a normal environment, what happens is there's pollen grains at the top of the anther. And the anther is the male part of the plant or part of the male part of the plant. And what happens is that pollen falls down onto the stigma, which is one of the female parts of the plants. And the pollen grain and the stigma, they communicate to each other and the stigma recognizes that pollen has fallen onto it via proteins and lipids. And so what happens is, since the stigma knows that the pollen has fallen on there, it hydrates the pollen and it nourishes it, and that pollen grows into a pollen tube. It grows down into the plant uh, where the pods are formed. It finds the egg cell within the ovary, uh, and it fertilizes it. Reproductive development uh, continues, and then we harvest at the end of the year. However, during heat stress conditions, like much of the prairies are seeing right now, including southern Manitoba where we are, uh, and, and, and there's been uh, quite a bit of research done on this by doctors Malcolm Morrison, Rob Duncan, and Chad Caselny, and, and most research indicates that around 30 degrees Celsius is when heat stress starts. So when this starts, the proteins and the lipids on both the pollen grain and the stigma change. Uh, and they no longer communicate and the stigma no longer recognizes that this is pollen that has fallen down onto it. Uh, so the reproductive development then comes to a halt and it stops. And, and, and so that is why we see seed yield uh, reductions under heat stress. So essentially it's a communication breakdown? Exactly, exactly. Hmm. <laughs> That's an interesting way to think about it. Is there, is there anything genetic that we know in terms of uh, improving that heat stress tolerance in, in canola? Yeah, so those researchers that I had just mentioned actually have shown that we can screen for heat stress tolerance. So this is something that life science companies and agriculture and agri-food Canada are likely doing um, anyways now, uh, you know, in light of the warm conditions that we have uh, this year, but we've had hot summers before and in the face of climate change too, this is definitely something on the forefront of everybody's mind. What is the environment going to do and, and how can we develop a climate resilient canola. So that would be a, a variety decision though for the producer if that information was available. Is there anything that a, a grower can do now in in the middle of uh, this stressful season on the canola? Yeah, so unfortunately there is not much to do about heat stress now. Uh, the best thing to mitigate heat stress is simply lower temperatures and water. Water will cool the plant via transpiration when it exits through the leaves. Uh, so rain would be welcomed, I'm sure, pretty much everywhere at this point. Okay. There has been a fair bit of talk about boron treatment, mm -hmm. uh, I'd say over the last decade or so in, in Western Canada. There are also some other products out there that uh, have marketing related to uh, to heat stress and, and allevi alleviating the symptoms of it. Uh, what can you tell us about the research that's been done? Maybe let's start with the, the boron treatment and, and the impact that has on canola. Heat right. Stress. Yeah. So there's been uh, quite a bit of research done on foliar applied boron for heat stress in Ontario, and and I believe that the, they have over 30 site years. But but really, what they found was only just over 30 percent of the time was there an economic response. Okay, and that's in Ontario. So take that for what it is. Uh, fast forward a couple of years, and and so this would have been a couple of years ago now. But the Canola Council uh, did their own heat stress. Uh, and, and boron trials and we were unable to find a response and so there's this you know just over 30 percent response economic response in Ontario and no response here but let's keep in mind Ontario is a completely different growing environment than Manitoba. So what do you recommend for a grower then farmers we we like to do something if we have a problem we like to do or at least feel like we're doing something about it what what do you recommend for a producer then in terms of maybe trying some of these treatments on their farm? 
Right, so unfortunately, as of right now, there isn't enough data out there for uh, for us to support any of these products. Um, you know, by all means, I, I definitely encourage growers to try new practices, try new products all the time, but always walk before you run. And uh, you know, this is this is a really good time to set up a field trial. And one thing that I would strongly, strongly encourage is to leave uh, not only just one un one uh, untreated check, but leave three. Uh, and now you have a replicated trial. And, and the more reps, the better, but you know, three is, is kind of like the bare bones. Okay, so that would be the ideal, or at least the minimum, having three different comparisons in a field. Yeah, or not even three different comparisons, okay. but three replications gotcha. and as many yeah. comparisons as you'd like. But that replication just for uh, not only for statistical analysis, but you know, one untreated strip uh, you know, what does that mean? Leave another one, see if they're the same. Now leave another one, see if all three of them are the same. There's just too much variability within the field um, and, you know, within a year uh, for to only leave one check strip and to get, you know, a definitive answer after that. Okay. So to, to wrap it up then, Nate, in terms of heat stress and the issues it causes in, in canola, what do you recommend in the long term as kind of the, the strategy for producers to manage against it or, or manage this risk? Is it about planting date or what is the, the best way to approach this? Well, so one thing that we could do is plant earlier. It's all about the flowering window. So if we can get canola to flower earlier in cooler, uh, you know, when the temperature is cooler earlier on in the summer, that would be ideal. However, we did see pretty warm temperatures in Manitoba right at the beginning of June. Um, and also early planting has its own challenges as well. We know, you know, flea beetles, frost, uh, the seed sits in the soil for two weeks and then it comes up. How much of your seed treatment is going to work after that? Um, so that has its own challenges. What I would like to see is something that like what Australia does. And what Australia does is they tailor varieties to different regions of the country. And you know, if a variety is better uh, suited for Northern Australia, that's what they recommend to grow there. Uh, and, and same with Southern Australia. So they're growing different varieties depending on which side of the country they're on because their environments are different. Uh, and, and our environments are different across the prairies too. Lethbridge is totally different growing environment than Altona. Yeah, and we have done that when it comes to length of the growing season with our canola varieties here, just maybe not looking at uh, the ability to handle heat stress. Exactly, and we do it with soybeans too, with maturity groups and tailoring the maturity groups to the proper uh, growing zone, Yeah, for sure. Well, thanks for your time and, and your insights on, uh, on this difficult topic, Nate. Yeah, anytime.